You know, tier lists are a funny thing. I made one for Second Offense, and now here we are a few years later, and I'm making Vigilante 8 content at least once a week. I've already covered the special weapons and the characters for both games, so you'd think there wouldn't be much left, right? Well, aside from redoing the Second Offense tier list sometime in the future, there's one other thing that we can rank in the Vigilante series. Maps. There are 8 maps in Second Offense and a whopping 11 in V8, two of which are unlockable and a third which is Nintendo 64 exclusive. I could also include the 7 maps from Arcade, but it would kind of be unfair to compare those to the first two games since I just put them all in D tier anyway. So with a total of 19 maps, we obviously have to find the good, the bad, and the just fucking plain ugly. So let's find out which of which. Houston, we have a problem. For anyone who's followed me for a while, this one really shouldn't be a surprise. Fucking Florida, huh? Man, where do I start with this one? Well, Florida does certainly have a lot going on. You've got the wind turbines, the thrusters on the beach side, electric fences, and of course, the centerpiece of it all, the launch pad. And there's quite a few things you can do with said launch pad. You can launch yourself into the sky and collect weapons and items on the way down. You can put the rocket onto the pad and burn your enemies to cinders, or you can simply destroy it in a spectacular fashion. So that all sounds fun and all, but why is this map the worst? Well, simply put, it's a water stage and water controls in Second Offense are fucking terrible. Plus add to the fact you've got sharks swimming around ready to fuck you up, so you absolutely are gonna have a bad time. Another thing with the water is if you drown, you will only have one of two ways to spawn back onto the main island, and that's the rocket tunnel, which can be easily abused with certain characters, plus with how skinny the main island is, it doesn't really leave much room for movement. Overall, you got a stage that's largely water, with water hazards and a central gimmick that's kinda cool, but easily abusable. The swarm is supreme! Go home, city slicker. You know... Nothing good ever comes out of California, and this stage kind of proves it. Man, I always dreaded coming to Valley Farms in any speedrun, because it just takes so goddamn long to finish the stage. Hell, even outside of a speedrunner mindset, the stage is still a pain in the ass. Firstly, it's huge. One of the bigger maps in the series, so going from A to B takes forever, and huge stages promote running away as a strategy. The other main issue is the weapon spawns. They just seem so uncommon here, and it gets even worse in Second Offense when some of the weapon spawns tend into transformations. Plus, all the brown crates you can get here can only be grabbed from one direction on the bridges, so you gotta turn your ass around just to grab it. I'm also not a huge fan of stall mechanics, but if your ass is dumb enough to be in those canals, you deserve to get stalled. Although this stage does have one thing I like about it though, and that's those wind turbines. You destroy one of these and you send it flying towards your enemy. You destroy enough of them, and you can kill someone with them. Wow, the two California maps back to back. Who could have seen that one coming? Man, I really want to like Cali. The containers are a ton of fun to fuck around with, and those are the sole reason why this map is above the last two maps. However, much like Florida, this map has the problem of being a water map. This time around, there aren't any sharks, but with how the cranes work in this stage, it's even more abusable than Florida's water. The way it works is that when you drown, the closest crane to your location will pick you up and drop you off at a single point. Which, on first glance, seems fine, but with G-Man just kind of existing, he takes that system and uses it in his favor. And actually Houston to some extent, too. Plus, the map is on the larger side, but at least the water takes up less space this time, giving you ample space to move, and the trucks that roll around can provide a pretty good laugh. Dusty dust, to dust. <coughs> and ashes to ashes. Ah yes, the devs testing stage. My favorite. You know, there isn't a ton to say about this map. Honestly, it's just kind of fucking boring, which makes sense in a testing view. You need a boring stage to work out the kinks, and the only thing this stage really has is the cool cutscene jumps. There is one other simple stage in this tier list, but it's a lot higher up for certain reasons. I ain't ready for Boot Hill. Swamp, skaters, and spooky mansions. Yeah, that sounds like Louisiana to me. Good old Louie, that one stage that has both the most and the least amount of water compared to the other water stages. Most of the action will take place on the farms area, behind the mansion, or down near the bridges since those are the flattest areas, though it's all a bit disconnected thanks to the water in the swamps. Water which can be a huge pain in the ass if you're trying to 100% fight coyotes or the drifters. 
Now see, the big gimmick for this stage is that you raise the two bridges and you flood the stage, leaving only the crypt and the mansion untouched. The idea is that you grab some hydro floaters and grab the items or weapons that are high above the stage. The only good thing about this though is you can force someone who normally runs away into a small area, forcing them to fight you. Louis also has quite a few goodies thanks to the guaranteed spawn and the gator cages, so despite its gimmick, it's a fairly okay stage. Not bad, but still not slick. Oh boy, a snow stage without any skis. How fun. Ski Resort is one of the more vertical stages, with the only flat areas being in the bottom and the top of the stage, with everything slanted in between. And while you do get skis if you play this stage in Second Offense, I'm looking at these maps if you play them in the game they came from. Although the avalanche is pretty fun, it can really only be used once, and going up the mountain can be kind of a pain in the ass, though it being difficult is probably the point. I fancy these olden days. Back-to-back -back snow stages that are basically the same map. Huh. Winter Games is more or less ski resort for second offense, but there's a ton more to do. Firstly, the weapon spawns you get for doing the bobsled run or the ski jump. Yeah, I know the slalom runs exist, but nobody does that. And those are useful for stocking up. Plus, you get a good chance of getting specials, wrenches, or shields on the way down on the bobsled run, which can help you out at a pinch. Winter Games is this slow down overall, mostly due to its size. It's actually the largest map in Second Offense, surprisingly, but at least it's easy enough getting down the mountain. However, this stage beats out Ski Resort for having ski transformations and better destructibles. School's out, and so are you! So I didn't have much experience with this stage at first, but thanks to the 40 Facts video, I was able to dig a little deeper into the stage, and honestly, it's... Okay. I mean, the stage is mostly flat with some hazards and weird warps. I'd say it's kind of like Sand Factory in a way, but the fact you're causing destruction on this cute and cuddly stage earns a few extra points in my book. As I said, on the rocks, not blended. Somehow, the best snow stage and the best stage with a shit ton of water in it. Imagine that. Alaska certainly is the best of the worst, what with its nice flat map and water area that's off to one side so it's not on the way. Plus skis are fairly easy to grab and even without them you've still got the roads going around the map anyway. The other reasons this map beats out its peers is because of the fun destructible, some of which you can use to advantage, and the funny pipes. The orca that hangs out in the water can be a bit of an asshole, but at least there's only one of him, unlike the Florida sharks. I'm one with the earth. Meals on Wheels, the stage. And in the exact center of this tier list, we have Ghost Town, an open stage with Tornado Valley, a train, and of course, an old town. I do like the nice open areas this map provides near several points, and the destructible town is fun to fuck around with. On the other hand, the valley is a pain in the ass. The AI have this habit of getting stuck down there, forcing you to go down to them, and in multiplayer, having the high ground is the advantage. Well, usually anyway, so if you get stuck down there, you've only got two options to get back out. The last thing on this map is both a blessing and a curse, the special train. In speedrunning, I fucking love this train, because for certain characters, the entire strat of this stage is just get to the train. In multiplayer though, every match just kind of devolves into everyone rushing to the train, then running off to collect other weapons. Every single time. Yeah! Oh, here I come, Hick! From a special abundance stage to one with almost no specials at all. Man, you really can't hate Canyon Lance. Having a stage where people aren't allowed to rely on special weapons is certainly a nice change of pace. Even if the layout is a bit of a dick and you've got to go to the edges of the map just to move from each of the three lanes on the map, still though, it's a solid enough stage, and even though the insta cure boulders can be a bit of a cunt, they still provide a few laughs. Shocking, ain't it? A location I only learned was real thanks to this game and Fallout. While the Hoover Dam in arcades sucked ass, the original version was pretty damn fun. Uh, no pun intended. The main area is where you're gonna spend most of your time, which was mostly flat and open but had some hazards to spice it up. Mostly just the electrical current thing you could send down by hitting the switch. You also had the sub areas, but they were mostly just for stocking up on weapons since they all lead back to the main area and the warps aren't as predictable as the ones in Cali or Florida, so you couldn't get comboed endlessly. I've come through time to claim what's mine. Three factions, 15 quest lines, and they all start here. 
No matter what character you pick, they all start here in Arizona. Which kind of makes sense when the opening cinematic takes place somewhere near this area so you don't travel far to start your quest. Arizona itself is a pretty basic stage, but unlike Sand Factory, it isn't boring as hell. The map is a good mix of low and high ground, and while the map is kind of big, the warp zones do help out with that, plus there is the classic secret of the ant from space. The cop can be kind of annoying, but he's easily avoidable. Oh yeah, and uh, bonus points for the destructible donut shops. <laughs> Looks like this is your stop! Behold the Burns Atomic Megabus! Faster, cheaper, and completely safe. Man, I do love me some huge ass fucking explosions, and there's at least two of them here in the form of those reactors. Add in the forklifts, the electric magnet thingies, and those little storage containers, and you've got more explosions here than a Michael Bay movie. Explosions from Michael Bay! This stage is also mostly flat with a big ass building, which we will see in another map, but we'll get to that one later on. The abundance of specials may be a downside for some, but you at least have to go out of your way, unlike the free buffet of Ghost Town. Hmm, sensor show no intelligent lie. <laughs> Area 51? Never heard of it. You know, I never played Secret Base much in the past until recently, and once I did, you can see why this stage is beloved by many, because goddamn, there's a lot going on here. Aurora bombers, laser turrets, nukes. We got it all here in Nevada. The runways are also open and flat, which is always a good thing, plus the hangars hiding the good shit if you need to stock up. The stage being divided into two can be a detriment, but it does allow you to bottleneck someone if the opportunity arises. I shall return as a great pillar of fire. Hot stuff coming through. <laughs> So, we're finally at the top four, and if you've been keeping track, then you've probably noticed that this is the last of the eight Second Offense maps. So why do I think the Pen is the best map in Second Offense? Well, honestly, it's mostly just my favorite map, so you could still make the argument some of the other maps are better than this one, but Pen is just so simple to me. The weapon spawns around the factory are evenly spaced and consistent, at least for me. The train is great to fuck around with. The map has some great flat areas and Arizona-style warps, and, uh... Uh... Shit. Look, map good. That's all you need. You gambled and you lost. The house wins! Whatever blows up in Vegas stays in Vegas. And now we reach what I like to call the Holy Trinity. The next three maps are all from the first game and what no other map could really match up against. We start with Casino City, the map with probably the best destructibles in V8's history. You can really feel the effort that went into some of these buildings if you go around and fucking tear them down. Plus you're encouraged to destroy some of this stuff what with the gas stations in certain buildings turning into ramps. You can also fuck around with a blimp to get those hard to reach special weapons. Though they are a lot easier to reach with second offense hovers, but I'm ranking these maps for how they hold up in the game they came with. The radar and jamming pools are also great for throwing someone off your trail, but you aren't invincible inside those things. Slicks Lightning makes sure of that. Fasten your seatbelts and get ready for takeoff! Ain't nothing like scrapping it out in a junkyard. The second entry to the Holy Trinity is Airplane Graveyard, a big ass flat map with a bunch of destructible shit on it with callable bombers, tucked away special weapons, and a plane that will absolutely fuck you up if you're not paying attention. It's always a treat to come here in any of the quest lines and is fun as hell in multiplayer. Just be careful of Dallas or he will burn down the entire stage. Then again, he can do that in just about any stage, huh? Is it getting hot in here? <laughs> Oil is king, or at least it was in the 80s. So I kind of gave away the top answer for this tier list in that April Fool's video that I did, but this is a whole month later, so hopefully y'all forgot about that. Like, the best map in this entire series is oil fields. Like, no contest, because it's such a tightly packed map with a lot of good shit in it, a lot of destructibles, and it keeps the action going, which is the main fucking point of this video game. Oil Fields ranks highest for a few reasons, but the main reason is because it's the smallest map, and Ergo has tightly packed non-stop action. Add that in with all the fun destructibles and you're gonna have a grand old time. Just make sure to dash for those specials, cause someone's gonna beat you to them if you don't. Good luck trying to run, because in the Oil Fields, you're not gonna go far, kid.
Man, this one was challenging. Trying to come up with reasons why some maps are ranked higher other than it's fun or I like it isn't exactly easy. I've never exactly been great with words, but this series of tier lists is helping me improve. So where do we go from here? While there's only one tier list left I've got to do, and that's a total redo of the second offense tier list, but that's what I'm saving for a rainy day. But hey, I'll keep milking this series as much as I can to keep providing you cunts with weekly entertainment. Uh, that's all from me, so I'll see you fuckers in a week. Yeah.